Now five o'clock, uh, could we call the meeting to order? If uh, Clerk Segrist could please call the roll. All right, Trustee Anthony is absent. Foster? <clears throat> Present. Here. Graham Hudick? Good evening. I'll let the record reflect Clerk Segrist is in attendance. Treasurer Slavens? Good evening. Trustee Snyderman is currently absent, it looks like. I will mark him in attendance if he comes later. And Trust Supervisor Williams. Hello, good evening. Uh, call for a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. Uh, roll call. Um, Trustee Anthony, not here, sorry. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. S Williams. Aye. I call for a motion to approve the minutes of the September 22nd and October 6, 2020 meetings. So moved. Support. Those in favor, roll call vote, please. Uh, Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. And now would be the time in the agenda for any citizens' non-agenda items. Any public comment at this time? Any public comment? Do we? I see we have 15 participants out there. Are there any raised hands? If there's anybody online today that would public comment, uh, please uh, notify Clerk Segrist by uh, hitting the raise your hand button or uh, hit star nine if you're on a cell phone. Any activity there, Mike? See no activity. I have a quick comment. My my power has been going up and down. It just four times in the last hour. So if I disappear, you'll know why. Thank you, Steve. Yep. No comments. No comments. Okay, very good. Uh, Treasurer Slavens, call for a motion to approve the bills, pay the bills. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Or those in favor, roll call motion. The roll call vote. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Okay, we've got eight items on the agenda, or 10 items on the agenda this evening. Uh, first item up is G1, request for budget amendment for the 2020 CIP plan. And we have with us uh, Director Trumbull, if there's any questions or comments. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the following budget amendment required for the 2020 CIP bond proceeds and adjustments to the plan. Increase revenue in the amount of $5,431,903 to the bond proceeds account. Decrease expenses uh, in the amount to the capital outlay um, sub-account 90 for $192,012 and eight account 80 for capital outlay, $585,000. Transfer the fund balance of, and that's a decrease in transfer the fund balance account for thirty six thousand seventy eight, and then increase expenses to the professional services account in amount of ninety three thousand five hundred seventy two dollars. Increase in the expenses to the bond discount in amount of one hundred one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Increase in the expense to the expense account for transfer the fund balance in the amount of six million fourteen thousand and ninety three dollars. Professional services account in the amount of eighteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and bond discount uh, sub account fifty four seventeen thousand three hundred and twenty eight dollars. Support. Very good. As been discussed, there's advantage to moving the twenty twenty and the twenty twenty one bond issuances together into one large issuance. Um, there's a significant cost savings by incurring bond issuing costs once instead of twice. Additionally, the bond interest rates are at a historic low. So the township could take further advantage of these low rates today. The township has also evaluated the project's plan for 2020 and 2021 and have removed those that are already completed or can wait until future years. Uh, are there any comments or questions for either Wendy or the other directors who are online? Seeing none, uh, call for a roll call vote. Unless Michael, did you have any questions or comments? Okay, a roll call vote then I think is in order. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, Foster? Aye. Graham Hudick? Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens? Aye. Snyderman? Aye. Williams? Aye. 
Item G2, request approval to purchase three replacement RICO copiers. The supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order in the amount of not to exceed $20,985 made payable to be applied imaging for the purchase of three RICO model C4500 color multifunctional devices. Support. In summary, in 2019, IT services took the, on the administration and procurement roles for the existing fleet of RICO multifunction devices deployed within various departments. IT has identified the following RICO devices needing replacement this year. Supervisor's office purchased in 2010, treasurer's office also purchased in 2010, and the human resources purchased in 2015. IT services requesting permission to purchase these three RICO FPC 4500s and the aforementioned printers. Are there any questions or comments for Wendy on this item? Go ahead, Diane. I just want to make a comment. I am so happy we're doing this. Our we use our printer daily to copy, you know, for residents or what have you. And we are always having to call IT because our printer is not working. So I'm very thankful that this is happening. Good. Anne Marie, you had a hand raise? Yes. Okay. No. All right. Uh, go ahead, Michael. I have a question. So it, it, the purchasing policy kind of asks that we go for three uh, quotes, but I see we only did two. Is that because we were looking for a specific, um, for a specific machine? We get the state uh, state pricing on the RICO machines. So we typically have gone directly through RICO through the state pricing contract that they have. Um, applied imaging is actually um, matching that state, that same state discount price that we would get directly from RICO. We've had some service um, issues with contacting RICO. I think during COVID they oh. let some people go and applied imaging has um, been very responsive for those that we purchased through them. So, and they actually are taking away the old um, equipment um, or not charging us to take away the old equipment and RICO would have charged us for that. So um, we were using the state pricing that applied imaging was gonna carry over from RICO. Perfect. Yeah. Seeing no other questions or comments at this point, um, can we have a roll call vote on the item? Foster. Saw your mouth aye, but you're muted. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segris aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G3, request approval to purchase laptop computers. Supervisor, I move to waive the formal purchasing policy request for bid proposal requirement for this purchase as competitive bidding was has been done by the state of Michigan. I further move to approve a blanket purchase order to CW, CDW government in an amount not to exceed $82,602 and allow single purchases over $10,000. I further move to approve the following budget adjustment as laid out in the board packet. Second. Thank you. In summary, Canton has been awarded an $82,602 Michigan Department of Treasury grant under uh, the Coronavirus Relief Local Government Grants. The ongoing health and economic crisis related to COVID pandemic required physical distancing measures and forced Canton Township to consider the need to introduce telecommuting working from home on a larger scale. Canton Township will purchase computer laptops to enable critical employees to work from home when needed. ITS is requesting, IT is requesting the purchase, approval purchase of laptops and computer software and equipment from CDW up to the grant amount of 82,602. Any unspent funds will be spent in other areas that are grant compliant. Are there any questions for Director Trumbull or comments? Um, I would, I'm fine with this, but are we going to be putting forward some type of telecommunity telecommuting program in the township or is this more an ad hoc kind of basis? At this point, it's really as an ad hoc um, basis. So the certain departments, actually all the departments have identified key individuals in their department that they want to have laptops to allow them the capabilities to be able to work from home um, in the event of an emergency or any other purpose um, that they might need a laptop. Um, we also are purchasing, I believe it's eight kind of pooled computers. So in the event of an emergency where somebody has to quarantine that we wouldn't normally, they wouldn't normally be in a position where we would have employees work from home or if, if a department had to get shut down or something because they had to quarantine 
um, we're going to have a pool laptop that people could also grab from um, to use just for a temporary basis for a couple weeks here or there if they if they absolutely needed to. But at this point in time, there's no official telecommuting. Um, as our departments are open mostly to the public, we have to be here as much as sure. we can. But um, we're trying to allow that flexibility, um, you know, to kind of jump into the next century, I guess, for the current century. Good ideas. Thanks. Seeing no other comments or questions at this time, roll call vote, please. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Severst Aye. Slavens. Aye. Slavin. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G4, consider approval of special land use for Home Depot outlot. We should have on the line with us Matt Burke and Brian Amon. I don't know if you see them. Uh, Matt Burke is the applicant and Brian uh, uh, Amon is his uh, representative. I do not see either on the attendance list. Okay. But okay. okay. I will read the motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution, approval of the special land use on the Home Depot lot. Whereas project sponsor has requested special land use approval for a single use building and a multi-tenant building on part of the parcel listed located south side of Ford Road and east of Lots Road, which are illustrated on the plans and could include for following use, the following uses. Standard restaurant with accessory pickup window with only one pickup window being permitted on the site. Medical dental clinic, financial institution, business services establishments, child care, <laughs> office building, uh, training, educational, bookstore, stationery shop, convenience grocery, drugstore, barbershop, hair styling salon, clothing alteration, shoe repair, and personal fitness health centers, and Whereas Planning Commission reviewed the request and applicable criteria and voted five to zero to recommend approval as the request meets the criteria of special land use approval in the corporate park overlay district and the site can accommodate the proposed buildings and uses. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Kent, Michigan does hereby approve the request for a single use building and a multi tenant building, which could include the following uses carry out restaurant, standard restaurant with accessory pickup window, with only one pickup window being permitted on the site, medical dental clinic, financial institution, business services establishment, child care center, general retail, office building, training educational, apparel, bookstore, stationery shop, convenience grocery, uh, drugstore, barbershop, hair styling salon, clothing alteration, shoe repair, and personal fitness health centers. Very good. Okay, in terms of the summary, much of the summary reads identical to, oh, I'm sorry, need a support for the motion. Support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the summary pretty much looks like the motion itself, with the exception of at a, a meeting in uh, March 6th, 2017, the Planning Commission approved the application for the Home Depot to reduce the number of parking spaces from 703 to 4, 514, thus allowing for the creation of the 1.82 acre lot illustrated on the applicant's special land use plan. The proposed plan is conceptual and a site plan application will still be required if the special land use application is approved. The site will be accessed by the existing drives from the west and the south and there will be no additional curb cuts on DuFord Road. Are there any questions or comments? Um, do you see any hands raised in the uh, audience. I see a few more participants have come in. Uh, and then also we have somebody has got some feedback coming through on their phone if they could mute either their phone or the computer I, microphone. I appreciate it. Um, is there any public comments or questions, Michael, that you see on this item? I see one resident has raised their hand. Okay. I do have a, uh, a, I'm sorry to interrupt. I do have a slide as well if you wanted to share screen. Oh, please do. Yeah, go ahead. Could, uh, share. That, that may answer questions or maybe not. Let's do that. One moment. It's not allowing me to allow. Okay. 
it was just the I'm so sorry. it was just the conceptual um i mean it's, it's very this is just a preliminary conceptual plan that was uh, included in the packet um i just thought i would put it up for reference but that's okay um okay i'm sorry no i've never seen it do this before where it won't allow me to give to share this to, to allow someone else to share the screen that's uh, jade is that something you could shoot to michael real quick via email um it is in the packet okay there you go i can okay. locate i don't know which page it is that i have to go back and look because i um well, we've got michael already kind of mic multitasking watching the uh, participants all right so I was reading the minutes, sorry. All right, no, that's fine. Looks like it's page uh, 30 of the packet. There we go. Yes. And then Patrick Sloan is on the uh, call as well, if uh, there's any other questions in regards to what happened at Planning Commission. Well, the, the pictorial is consistent with what I've seen previously. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mike, if we could go back and, and if there's a public comment or a raised hand uh, from the public, now would be a good time to have them come on and, and make their comments. And I would request that the speaker limit to three minutes. All right. There, uh, Eric, your, your hand was up, so I'm going to promote you to panelists. And you are able to talk if you still would like to. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just, I did, I know that Brian and Matt, um, it doesn't sound like they're in attendance tonight, but I just did just want to let you know that um, we are here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, my name is Eric Williams with Stonefield Engineering and Design. So if there are any questions in regards to the plan, would be happy to address those. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. No relationship to myself, but the record reflect. Williams is like Smith, a very common name. <laughs> um, are, is there any other uh, raised hands in the audience? I see nothing in the audience. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and go over to trustees. Anne Marie, please. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that this particular project had a lengthy discussion in the Planning Commission. And Patrick, I just want to also let you know, Jade, Patrick is doing a great job. And um, he comes on and he really explains everything well. He goes through all the ordinances, all the master plan details. He's really, he's really good. And we spend a lot of time listening to that before we discuss it. Um, also, Greg Green did a good job on this. The new plan originally had um, two windows because Mr. Mann's thought was that uh, due to COVID that we would need more drive-throughs in Canton. And actually we had some objections to that on the planning commission, basically stating that we didn't believe that, you know, the present state of COVID, we should determine our needing more drive-throughs throughout Canton. And so we reduced the windows from two to one so that a pharmacy could come in rather than have the drive-through restaurant. And if it were a restaurant, they, it could just be a pickup window rather than a drive-through like a, a McDonald's or a Burger King or anything like that. Um, the plan that we were going to see, I don't know if you were, you were able to bring it up, Michael, but one thing the Planning Commission had a lot of issues with is that it was very closed and tight space and there's not a lot of open space there. So you don't see um, any outdoor seating areas or anything like that. So the Planning Commission talked about that a lot also, um, although they did assure us that they would take our thoughts and recreate that space. It would exactly be like the concept that we will be able to see maybe if we look it up here. So it was a good meeting. Um, Greg Williams was, um, his history, he did know a lot by being able to push back because um, they, we were told at first that it was a precedence that the spot next to it, remember there's a spot right next to it that has a drive-through. And so we were told that the precedence was that we also could allow two windows there for a drive through and Greg was able to push back and say, no, the precedence is not that, it's only one window. So, you know, thankfully he had that, that knowledge and we were able to um, modify the, the motion. So I, we were able to bring it up, but it was, um, it was a lengthy discussion and I think um, we came up with a good plan. However, it's only one window and we did ask for the plan to be redone. It was just too crammed. It needs more open space. Right. And then um, just to add to that, too, um, this is purely conceptual at this point. Um, so when there is a final, that will come back through the Planning Commission and then back to the board as well for final approval. 
level. So um, if the if the drawing and I'm trying to pull it back up myself, if the drawing doesn't reflect the one window, um, if the direction from planning commission was given to the petitioner to do that when the final uh, project comes through, um, that'll obviously be something that'll be addressed uh, when it comes back through the plan planning department to the planning commission, then back to the board. Jade, I, I have now allowed participants to share. I don't know what changed, but I can <laughs> you know, to, to take the screen if you want to. And I did see that um, Brian Amon is on and he has a hand raised. Mr. Supervisor, would you like me to promote him to panelists to allow him to? Talk? Yes, please. He's representing the uh, project. All right, Mr. Amon, you are promoted if you would like to address the board. Ryan, if you'd like to speak, you'll have to unmute. At this point, there have been no questions raised for you. No, no problem. I, I just wanted this. To, first off, I, I heard uh, uh, board member Hudek's uh, description and have no qualms with anything. I, I just also wanted to follow up on the comment uh, made earlier. We did get the revised plans in showing only one uh, window on the site, removing the drive and whatever. So I think we're set. Hopefully we're, we can answer any of the questions you may have in regard to this, but uh, we appreciate your consideration of this. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Um, can we go back to the full screen of the participants, uh, the trustees, so I can see if anybody else would like to speak at this time? Or have make the uh, I can see that I have nobody has their hand raised. So. Okay. So um, is there any other board comments or questions at this time? Okay. Seeing none, call for roll call vote on the item. All right. Uh, Foster. Hi. Graham Hudak. Hi. Seagrass Dye. Slavens. Hi. Snyderman. Hi. Williams. Hi. All right. Motion carries. Good. Item G5. Consider Metro Opportunities 1 LLC and Metro Opportunities 10 LLC future land use map amendment application for distribution. Mr. Supervisor, I move the board approve the following. Resolution, approval of distribution of a future land use map amendment to the comprehensive plan. Whereas project sponsor has requested approval of an application to prepare an amendment to the comprehensive plan, future land use map to reclassify the tax parcels listed, which are located on the north side of Michigan Avenue and east of Denton Road from medium low density residential, three dwelling units per acre to mixed use. And whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the application to prepare an amendment to the Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map and voted 5-0 to submit the application to prepare an amendment to the Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map to the Township Board of Trustees and recommend that the Township Board distribute the proposed amendment for review and comment to surrounding municipalities and other agencies required by the Michigan Planning Enabling Act. Now therefore be it resolved the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Canton, Michigan does hereby approve the distribution of the proposed amendment to the future land use map of the comprehensive plan for the subject site uh, pursuant to the Michigan Planning Enabling Act. Board. Very good. And once again, the summary <laughs> reads just like the model resolution, so I'm not going to read it a second time. If there's there any questions or comments anybody would like to make at this time, uh, now would be a good time to ask. And, uh, do we have Mr. Uh, Richard Ratner on the line uh, representing the project? I do not see anybody by that name. Okay. Do we see any raised hands? We see uh, Gail McGregor, who has raised uh, her hand. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's give her an opportunity to, to make a comment, and then we'll go from there. All right, Gail, you have been promoted to panelist. You can speak as soon as you unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Gail McGregor from Williams, Williams, Ratner and Plunkett. I am uh, sitting in for Rick Ratner. He is planning on being on the call, but you all are going so fast. <laughs> he thought he could be here by 5.30, but anyway, I am, uh, I, we represent the, the applicant. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to ask, answer whatever questions you might have. Perfect, Gail. I appreciate you being online with us. And uh, Williams, Williams, and Ratner are again no relationship. <laughs> um, is there any questions or comments for the board? Or I'm sorry, for uh, Gail or the team. Any comments or questions? 
Go ahead, speaker, please. I would just ask if there's, an, uh, it's really hard to pick out of here exactly what this project is going to look at like, if there, if there is something in mind today. I was just wondering if you can explain that. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Could you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll speak up. Um, I was just saying that the going through what's presented to us, it's, it's um, a little difficult to imagine what, what you are proposing. And um, I was just wondering if there is something uh, a little more concrete planned that you could describe to us. The, o the only answer that I have for that is that it, I have not seen any site plans. I don't know that any actually exist at this point, but I do know that the in, the intention is to uh, develop a warehouse and a distribution center, which will be used by a major online retailer. I see, gotcha. And I think Gail has just, that's a pretty good response based on the nature of the project. Uh, this is, it's a conceptual request. And once we get through these next steps, then yeah, I think you'll see more details and color. Okay, yeah. Yes. Just didn't know if I was missing some more specifics in here. We had a, quite a lot of information, but none of it was very descriptive. So that's by, by design, Steve. Yeah, okay. I mean, so I see the zoning or the future land planning for to the, to the west is all low density residential. It looks like to the north is high city residential. And then to the east is this light industrial. Uh, what is the benefit to having mixed use? It's kind of sandwiched between residential and light industrial. Um, So it, I, I can jump in here and we can let Patrick weigh in as well, but the, um, this is really just taking the mixed use can actually within the mixed use area can be light industrial as well. Um, so what was traditionally just residential is now just being moved further to the west and I, I'll let Patrick um, go into a little more detail um, if he is still on the call. All right, there he is. <laughs> and it was really a matter of, um, in the way that they're looking at the buffers around this is really going to still protect the residential areas from the light and from the mixed use slash light industrial areas. So does that answer your question, Michael? Um, I guess I, I'm just kind of curious, I, I apologize for my ignorance, but Mixed use, it can be light industrial. So, but what, what can't it be? The, well, and actually, is Patrick on the call? I, I, yeah. Uh, that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the the mixed use district can be a number of uh, a number of different zoning districts, and it uh, recommends. Um, mostly commercial uses and in the mixed use classification, the only light industrial or industrial type of uh, zoning district that it proposes is the LIR district. So the mixed use classification, unlike the light industrial classification and the future land use map, the mixed use classification will only allow the light industrial research as a prospective industrial district. Um, and what's unique about the LIR or the light industrial zoning district, should it be rezoned to that later in the process, is that it requires a minimum of a 100 foot setback from any residential zone uh, or used property. So the advantage of if the mixed use classification is adopted into the future land use map, and if there's a subsequent rezoning to LIR, there's going to be a minimum of 100 foot setback um, which is not the case in many of the other industrial districts. Oh. So also like many of our other projects, Michael, we do, we've done in the past is this is uh, allowing the conceptual plan to move forward. So then we can see the next level detail. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.
Is there any additional comments or questions at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, roll call, vote for the motion. Anthony, I'm sorry, Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G6, consider approval of to schedule show cause hearings for two parcel of property subject to dangerous building hearings orders, hearing orders. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the date of November 17, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. for the purposes of conducting show cause hearings for the properties that fail to comply with the deadlines imposed by the dangerous buildings hearings officer for those properties. Support. Okay. In light of the failures to comply, the board must take action to set a public hearing at which time the property owners must be given an opportunity to show cause why the hearing officer's orders should not be enforced. The hearings must occur again within 30 days after the meeting at which the board sets the hearing and the notice of the date and the time chosen shall be sent to the property owners. Following the hearings at which both parties, the property owners and township staff be given the opportunity to speak the board must decide if the determination of the hearing officer should be carried out as ordered, whether the order need not be followed or whether there's some other appropriate resolution to the matters as we've discussed in the prior case. Is there any questions or comments for Jade at this time? I guess I guess I would just ask on the Lots Road one, um, I'm sure uh, the pandemic had some impact on what was going on there, um, and I remember the lawsuit that's mentioned here. Um, are we, I, I guess I don't really want to get it, rehash everything, but are we moving forward with the ones that we've already approved? To uh, no, we've got a stay. So, yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll let you, uh, Jake, go ahead and answer. No, that's okay. But yes, the, the court is issued a stay. So actually right now what we're doing is we're in a holding pattern waiting for um, something to be scheduled where we can go back in and present and Kristen can, and our legal team can, can take another whack at that in the court system. We thought it was important to keep these. We, we are already behind. You can see from, um, I, don't, I think it was on here, but our dates have already come and gone as to when we gave them for the other two remaining properties and the other two addresses on lots. So we wanted to not lose too, not let them get too far out and get those um, on the docket as well. So moving them through, they're probably going to end up in the same position, but at least at that point, we can take all three properties at the same time. Um, um, but we, so we wanted to continue this, uh, this progress. Okay. In regards to the first one that you're mentioning, we, we haven't made any progress during COVID. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions at this time? Okay, seeing none. Um, roll call vote on the item. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G7, consider approval of contract purchase order to Mid-American Group for Fellows Creek Club Pond Dredging. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award the contract for the Fellows Creek Golf Club Pond Dredging to Mid-American Group at 8475 Port Sunlight Road, Newport, Michigan, 4166, in the amount of $188,000, with funds to be paid from the account number listed for capital improvement plan. Support. Very good. Okay. Um, in August 2020, Leisure Services advertised a request for a proposal for fellow oh, oh, oh. club pond dredging, uh, which is in the attached uh, deck. With the assistance of our contracted engineer, Mannequin Smith, Leisure Services and Finance staff interviewed all three companies who submitted proposals. After careful evaluation, uh, the recommendation for Mid-American Group for the Fellows Creek Club pond dredging in the amount of 158,000, again, to be paid uh, from the accounts as shown. And we've got Greg online, if there are any questions. If you've been out there, they're yucky. They dredge them, they're gonna look better. All right, in summary. Any questions or comments for Greg? Seeing none, oh, go ahead, Amory. No, thanks for this. Um, it, kind of as an aside, as we're speaking about ponds, um, I saw the pond at Heritage Park. Is it kind of in the same condition? Are we getting to that also? One right behind the police station has like a thick green foam on it. Is that what we're seeing? 
Yeah, so that's a different case. So the, the main issue at Fellows Creek is the depth of the pond and the amount of sediment that has collected in there is affecting the irrigation of the course. So the, the sediment is so high now that it's gonna be sucked into the irrigation system. We have to constantly clean out the sediment. Um, and also uh, this year, along with a couple of years ago, the water levels got so low in there because of the, it's so shallow now um, that there wasn't enough water to irrigate the course uh, some during a couple of occasions. So the case at, um, and the ponds behind Heritage Park has to do with, again, sediment, but it's still deep enough, so it doesn't need to be dredged. Um, if you remember a few, I guess about a month, month and a half ago, we awarded a contract for a bubbler and bacteria insulation in the large pond at Heritage Park. We also did that in the smaller pond earlier this summer. Um, that has uh, the most visible algae in it. Um, because when you spray that algae to kill it, it falls to the bottom and actually creates more algae in the future. So the bacteria eats the um, sediment at the bottom and kills the food source for that algae. We've done this at um, hole number seven on uh, pheasant run with fantastic results. There's no um, algae on that pond this year, but it does take about two years for the full um, full benefit of that. I expect by next year um, we'll see a significant improvement in both of the Heritage Park ponds and by the following year we'll have no issues with um, algae. Okay. So it's a long-term fix but it takes a little more time. Okay, thank you. Stephen, did you have a question related to this? Okay, very good. All right. Call for roll, vote. roll call vote. Foster. Aye. M. Hudak. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G8, consider budget amendment and approval of purchase order for Copper Park synthetic turf surfacing. Mr. Supervisor, I'm going to do this in one motion. I move to approve the purchase order uh, in the amount of $75,000 to Great Lakes Recreation at 39 Veterans Drive, Suite 310, Holland, Michigan, 49423 from the account number listed, capital outlay land improvements for the purchase and installation of the synthetic turf servicing at Copper Park and the attached budget adjustment amendment. It's important. Thank you. On our October 10th, 2019 invitation bill, the bid was publicly advertised for Copper Park Playground construction. Since no bids were received, staff sought quotes for multiple contractors. After thorough review, staff recommended Great Lakes Re uh, Recreation. A scope of work and cost proposal was negotiated with Great Lakes Recreation. And due to the park's location in the local area, the construction is being funded through the CDBG. Great Lakes Recreation's uh, original proposal for full Copper Park development was higher than what we had budgeted. Therefore, the synthetic turf surfacing was removed from the original proposal with the intent of requesting the remaining dollars from 2021 CD, CDBG. Um, and then this is going to be the rolling hills, right, that are not completed yet, but that will be completed before uh, the snow flies, or at least before winter. Okay. All right. Is there um, any comments or questions for Greg on this item? This is the final one. Go ahead, Greg. Make a quick comment. We do have the grand opening this Thursday at 430. Um, you will see um, when you're out there a temporary fencing with some screening up um, that area. The area behind that that is all dirt is where there will be rolling hills with the synthetic turf put on top of that. Um, so that's the area that we've been talking about. When you see that Thursday, you'll know, kind of know where this new feature would go. Okay. Right. Any comments or questions for Greg on this one? I guess, uh, uh, yeah. Seeing no comments or questions, call for a roll call vote on the item. Foster. Aye. From Hedek. Aye. Secret Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. 
Item G9, consider reappointment of downtown development authority uh, board members. Supervisor, I move to reappoint Laura Giovi, Mark Waldbauer, and Seth Kleinglass to the Canton Downtown Development Authority for a term of four years, each to expire October 31 of 2024. Okay. Um, in terms of background, DDA board is made up of citizen members and members who have an interest in the DDA, either an owner of a property or an owner of a business, a manager, a worker within the district. Public Act 197 of 1975, enabling legislation for the establishment of the DDA, provides for a board of eight to 12 members. A majority of the members must have an interest in the development area, while re remaining members and citizens at large. Laura Giovi's appointment to the DDA required or expired on May 10th, 2020. However, due to the COVID, her term was extended to October 31st. Laura is a Canton resident who previously served as manager of district operations for Home Depot in Canton. Laura has been a dedicated contributing member to DDA and expressed her interest in being reappointed for another term. Mark Walbauer appointed to the DDA also expired May 10th was extended also to October 31st. Mark is a long-term Canton resident and has served on the DDA board since 2004. Mark currently serves as vice chair of the DDA. His dedicated service played an integral role in the success Canton's DDA and expressed an interest also in being reappointed. The final one, Seth Klein class, appointed the DDA expired on uh, October 11, 2020. Seth is the owner of Sweet Bikes, which is located in the DDA district. Sweet Bikes is a specialty bicycle shop, which opened in 2020 in the Canton Retail Center at the northwest corner of Ford and Lots. He has also dedicated, been dedicated, contributing member to the DDA, and the board has expressed an interest in him being reappointed for another term. Are there any questions or comments uh, to myself? Yeah, go ahead, Summer. I just want to say this, uh, these I think are the first appointments that we've made since we started the new um, interview and application process. Um, so these three reappointments had to fill out the application and they were considered by the supervisor, Trustee Snyderman and myself. And we also considered two new appointments to the DDA, which I think will be coming before the board at our next meeting. But I think it's a good process um, and I'm happy that we're getting it rolling. I concur. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys very much for the efforts you've already put in and will continue to put in going forward. So seeing no other comments or questions at this time, we'll call vote on the motion. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Secrest Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snedeman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Item G10, consider accepting Center for Technology and Civic Life Grant, Life Grant for elections and budget amendments. Supervisor, I move to approve the accepting a Center for Technology and Civic Life Grant in the amount of $42,931 purchase a Canon scanner for $8,179 and authorize the following, the uh, attached budget adjustment. Support. And again, the motion reads pretty much like the summary. So this will allow, the grant allows Michael to buy a, an additional scanner to help us go through the election process a little faster. Anything you'd like to add, Michael? Um, nope, other than a lot of this grant is gonna be used to reimburse um, what we've already already spent on some of the upgrading costs. So that should help us um, at the end of the year. Um, the increase in, in mail ballots has resulted in, in, in greater expenses than anticipated. We've also got um, a lot, we're doing a lot of, people are using a lot of overtime right now in the clerk's office and we can also build that. We can use this for that as well. Um, so um, that's that. Very good. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of traffic come and go every day down in your office. Busy, busy. Okay. Any additional comments or questions from other members? Okay. Seeing none, uh, roll call vote on the motion. Foster. Aye. Graham Hudak. Aye. Segrist Aye. Slavens. Aye. Snyderman. Aye. Williams. Aye. Very good. Okay. That concludes our formal business for the evening. Um, is there any other additional raised hands public comment out there, Michael, if you take a last look? Any additional public comment? I see nothing. No additional public comment. Very good. Um, 
I'd like to remind everybody that uh, October 20th, next Tuesday, is our, is that next Tuesday? Yeah. Um, study session to review the 2021 budget amendments. Um, so if that's not on your calendar, please do add. Is there any additional uh, staff comment at this time? Copper Park Thursday evening. Um, any additional trustee comments? Time. Seeing none, call for a motion to adjourn. I moved. Support. We'll call a vote on the motion as presented. Anthony Foster. Aye. Out of habit, sorry. Graham Hudeck. Aye. Uh, Seagrass Eyes. Stevens. Aye. Nyman. Aye. Williams. Aye. That concludes our meeting this evening. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. Have a good night.